the Midtown Manhattan Farmer's Market in New York City, Dixon Despamiers is shopping for fresh vegetables. There are still some shallots to be had. The Columbia University professor doesn't hesitate and starts carefully choosing a few of them. Perfect, perfect. Hiding. The locally grown onions are pretty expensive. These shallots, they were giving them away 20 years ago. They couldn't sell them. There were so many. Today, they're a gourmet item. You pay a lot of money for this now. And if they're available. With the floods that they had this year, this is all there is. There should be five or six of these. There's just one. Drought, flooding, frost, hail. The extreme weather in recent years means growers can never be sure of a harvest. In addition, more and more farming land is being lost, while the world population continues to grow. So how can food supplies be insured for the long term in heavily populated areas? The answer could be no longer growing crops outside in a wide area, but vertically in high rises. Several years ago, Despamier and students from Columbia University further developed the idea of vertical farming. Crops can be grown in high-rise greenhouses in the middle of the city. A 30-story building could feed some 50,000 people. This is Sunworks Greenhouse at the Manhattan School for Children, where the technique can be easily observed. Lettuce grows without soil in a special nutrient liquid. Gregory Kiss is an architect in New York City. He designed the greenhouse, and he says it won't be long before vertical farming is commonly practiced. These are all techniques for growing plants that are very well known. They're very successful in the market commercially. It's just adapting them. So it's small changes that we're proposing. We can take those and simply uh, rearrange them so that instead of being horizontally, which works well on the roof of a building, we can make them vertical so that they can fit into the facade of a building. Like in this office building, which his company designed. He says the idea is especially attractive for countries with nutrient-poor soil, such as Abu Dhabi or Dubai. Whether grapevines, apple trees, grains, or lettuce, many crops can be planted indoors and even taste good. They're nice green plants. You can eat them all. I can prove that right away. You see? Watch. Here's a testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. This is delicious. And what did we just eat? We just ate romaine lettuce. A high-rise farm with 10 square kilometers of stacked space could have a yield as high as a farm with the equivalent area extended across the ground. The trick is to have many crop levels spread over many stories. I would make another layer, and another layer, and another layer, in fact, I could make maybe 10 layers of this hydroponic facility, and as a result, I could grow a lot more of these plants. And growing crops in the city means there are also no transportation costs. But the cost of artificial light for these vertical farms is still very high. Yet the professor believes the advantages outweigh the problems. Cities occupy only 2 to 3 percent of the land mass of this planet, but we use the size of South America to grow food for that 2 percent. What if half of that were put back into natural growth and allowed to just return to nature? That would be good for climate protection. There are already a few vertical farms in the world, but not yet the size of skyscrapers. Still increasing numbers of city governments, architects and agricultural scientists are working on the idea. And Dixon Despommiers will continue to promote his vision of vertical farming as a solution to the world's hunger problem.